guys, um, I wanted to film a video today about my first trimester before I get too far into my second trimester. I am 15 weeks today, so I'm only like a week into my um, second trimester and I wanted to kind of um, update you guys and tell you what has been going on. Um, so for you guys who don't know me, this is my second pregnancy. I have a daughter who's 20 months. Um, and as I say, I'm 15 weeks, so I'm due on the 5th of August 2019. And um, sh my daughter will be two years and two months when this baby is born. So I found out that I was pregnant on the 28th of November 2018. And we had been trying for five months, which um, was... A really short amount of time for us because it took two years to fall pregnant with my daughter but only five months to fall pregnant the second time so that was a blessing because it seems really perfect timing that um, we're going to have this baby kind of in the summer and we're thinking of moving out of London the next summer in 2020 so then our baby will be one by then um, and it just seems really perfect timing for us. In terms of symptoms before I had the positive test um, I didn't really have any apart from the night before I took the test, so um, I have really irregular cycles, so I never wait to miss a period because I don't really miss periods because my periods are kind of every six to nine weeks, so I never really know when they're coming, um, and because I needed to know when I was pregnant so that I could start some medication, which I'll talk about later, um, I wanted to... Um, take pregnancy test basically took a pregnancy test at about four weeks and then every week after that um, and this was going to be the first pregnancy test that I took that month um, and I was convinced that I was coming on my period so I kind of was like crampy in my stomach that evening and I said to my husband I'm pretty sure I'm coming on my period tonight or tomorrow morning um, and it just felt like yeah, like I was coming on my period, which is actually really common and a lot of women get signs that they're coming on their period, like the signs and symptoms of pregnancy are basically the signs and symptoms of a period. But then what happened was that I turned over in bed and my breast felt really sore and I don't get sore breasts when I'm due my period, I've only ever got that in pregnancy. Um, and then that kind of started something ticking in my mind, thinking, hmm, that's a bit odd. Maybe I'm getting these symptoms because actually I would have been due my period tomorrow and I would have come on, but maybe I'm not going to. Um, and I have sore breath, so like, I really started to think I'm going to get a positive test tomorrow. Um, and then the next morning I woke up, I hadn't come on my period that night, which made me even more convinced this is going to be positive. But I didn't actually say anything to my husband because when we were trying for my daughter, because it took us two years, there were times that I was convinced I was pregnant then and I just thought, you know, this could just be in my head and I don't want to work myself up and it be negative and be disappointed. Um, but then I took the test and my husband came in with me to read the test and it was positive. My initial kind of reaction and feelings were um, quite excited and also a little bit scared. Um, but that it was much more positive than I thought it would be. So if you've kind of followed my journey uh, with Miriam, my first daughter, I had high premises gravidarum and I was very, very sick in my pregnancy. And it was a big, big decision to um, decide to have another child and go through that again. Um, but we did make that decision and I thought that as soon as I got that positive test, I would just be full of fear and anxiety but I actually wasn't it just seemed perfect and perfect timing and I knew that it's what we wanted we were trying for another baby I would have been really upset if we um felt like like if we if we couldn't fall pregnant and I couldn't have had a second baby so most of my feelings around it were really positive but as I say because I went through such an awful time in my first pregnancy I was a bit scared and apprehensive as well so I'm just going to um, take a little bit of time to talk about high premises gravidarum because that pretty much sums up my first trimester um, so as soon as I found out I was pregnant I started taking an anti-sickness called cyclozine and um, before I started trying for a baby I went and visited my consultant and discussed um, trying for another baby and all my options and we agreed that I would start an anti-sickness as soon as I found out I was pregnant even if I wasn't being sick and I wasn't at the, that time feeling nauseous about three days after the test I started to feel nauseous but a manageable nausea I was still getting out and within about a week to a week and a half of being pregnant I then couldn't get out of bed and I was 
um, too poorly. Uh, what I did also at first, I started the cycling and I was also contacting my doctors because the doctors wanted to know as soon as possible so they could get in and see me so that if I did need any further treatment they could do that quickly um, and I also was booked in for an early scan because they like to rule out other causes of sickness and problems in pregnancy um, when you have high premises gravidarum so I also had an early scan. When I um, saw the doctors the sickness was quite bad by that point so I started a stronger anti-sickness called on Dantron and that's what I'm currently on now on Dantron and um, Prochlorperidine. So I stopped the cyclozine uh, mainly because it was um, giving me some other issues and I didn't um, find that it was particularly helping and I started on Dantron and Prochlorperidine and that seems to be the mix that has kept the nausea and the vomiting under control. I needed to go in for IV rehydration once in this pregnancy. I had to go in about four or five times in my pregnancy with Miriam. So the fact that I've only had to do that once so far has been really great. Um, I think the early treatment and the early, the getting the medication early, seeing the doctors early, um, when I was dehydrated, getting treatment early, um, all contributed to the high premises being way more controlled than it ever was with Miriam. It just got completely out of control last time. And as I say, from about five, five and a half, six weeks pregnant, I was then bed bound for about six weeks um, and I needed a lot of help to look after my toddler. I couldn't cook, so um, I had wonderful friends who were cooking for me. My husband had to take over basically all the housework, all the looking after my daughter, all the um, cooking and cleaning and everything. I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't even get out of bed. But I wasn't, but in that time I wasn't actually getting particularly dehydrated because the vomiting was controlled by the medication, um, but I was just getting miserable. So then by the point when I was about 10 weeks pregnant, I then went to the doctors again. I was seeing the doctors about every week or every two weeks at this stage while they were trying to control it and trying to keep it, keep me well. And... Um, at the 10 point week point I went in crying my eyes out saying I can't cope with this because I can't I'm not living a normal life I'm just in bed all the time and I'm not able to get out I'm not able to see friends I'm not able to look after myself and it was just really miserable and I was I knew that even though the vomiting was under control um my life wasn't under control in the sense that I wasn't I, I wasn't able to live a normal life and I wanted to get to a point where I could at least get out of bed and do basic things for myself and my daughter. Um, so then they put me on steroids. And I was on steroids in my last pregnancy and they made a huge difference. So I've been on steroids now for four weeks, nearly four weeks, so about three and a half weeks. Um, and I can't tell you the difference they make. Like they just complete. I had a week in the middle, so I was on them for a week and then the second week. I was really bad again, but I think I might have got a bug. I had a migraine and I felt really unwell and I was bed bound again for about five days. And I felt really miserable because I felt like the steroids had stopped working. But actually looking back, I think I might have had a bug or something else was going on as well. Um, but since then, I have felt so good. Like, I, you know, the doctors say, oh, you're not nauseous anymore. And I don't think the nausea necessarily is going to go away, but I get big breaks where I don't feel too nauseous, like even right now, I've literally just taken my medication um, about half an hour ago, and so now I'm feeling really quite good. I'm feeling in this pregnancy way better than I did the entire pregnancy with with Miriam, like how, how I feel right now, I never felt when I was pregnant with Miriam, I felt dreadful. Even on the steroids, I felt weak, and I had like muscle wasting, so my legs were shaking. And I've got that this time, like similar, but just nowhere near as bad. Um, I lost um, two kilograms this time. I lost four kilograms with Miriam. Um, so even the weight loss is, is better, and I've gained weight quickly since being on the steroids. And um, I've been able to just do things that I was never able to do um, when I was pregnant with Miriam. So I've been talking about high premises for quite a long time so I'm going to also um, talk about some of my um, other symptoms that I had. Um, I first want to talk about my mental health in pregnancy because um, that's partly affected by the high premises so it kind of links in but it's also just I think how I feel when I'm pregnant and I've talked to other women about it and they feel exactly the same. When I'm pregnant I feel like 
and not so much now actually but definitely toward the beginning of definitely when I was feeling sick I just feel like not myself at all like I just feel like the, the baby has has taken over my body and I'm not my own anymore and I just feel like it's really hard to explain and I and I, you know comment below if you understand what I'm talking about but I just feel so kind almost like I'm looking at myself from the outside like I'm being filmed like I'm looking at myself and it's like I'll watch my old videos and I'll watch things from when I wasn't pregnant sorry from when I wasn't pregnant and I'll hardly believe that that was me or I'll remember times that I went to the park or times that I went on holiday with friends and I was really myself and that it just doesn't feel like that's who I was or like that's who I am now um and I know that goes as soon as the baby comes and I was really scared I didn't really bond with Miriam at all when I was pregnant in my last pregnancy um and I was really scared about postnatal depression and I actually got observed by midwife for, for an extended period of time because they were worried about postnatal depression because I was diagnosed with antenatal depression last time um but um I didn't get any postnatal depression and I felt the happiest I've ever felt after having Miriam in my entire life I was just full of really happy hormones I never got baby blues I got tearful but tearful out of just sheer joy and happiness not out of tiredness or exhaustion or sadness or depression or anything like that I was just so happy so I, I know there's an end in sight and that, that's one of the quite nice things about it being a second pregnancy because you kind of know what to expect and you're kind of like well I've done this before and I know the sickness goes after I've had the baby I know the mental health stuff gets better I know that I'll be happy when the baby's here I know that I'll bond with this baby um in in a way that I didn't know that with my first pregnancy I also like kind of linked to that I have like a real lack of motivation to do anything I don't want to clean the house really I don't like again that's got better as I felt better but like I just don't want to do anything I don't really like I have to force myself to leave the house I have to force myself to get up and get dressed to force myself to get a shower which isn't really me at all like I quite like sort of being up and doing things and going to baby groups and the last week or so has been more like that but definitely in my first trimester um I just had a complete lack of motivation to do anything the other symptom I have that isn't connected um necessary to, to anything is restless leg syndrome and I got this in my last pregnancy and I didn't know about it until I looked it up because I got it in my last pregnancy and obviously in this pregnancy I recognized it straight away but it's basically when you're you're you feel like you have to constantly move your legs and it's really horrible and I think like I said about the cyclosine I think that was making the cyclosine was making it worse and as soon as I stopped the cyclosine it did get better but um, it was still really, it's just really annoying because you just can't sleep. And then based on not sleeping either, um, I also had pregnancy insomnia, which again, I got in my first pregnancy, but I got it much later in my first pregnancy. It wasn't really until the third trimester that I noticed that I would wake up at four in the morning and I would just then be awake all morning and I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. Um, but this time it's happened much earlier. I go to bed at 9.10 and then I'll wake up at 4, 4.30, and then I won't be able to go back to sleep. Um, but to be honest, it, it's not. It's annoying at night, but it doesn't actually make me more tired in the day. It's almost like my body needs less sleep, sleep in pregnancy. It's really odd. But in the first trimester, I feel exhausted all the time. But it's still that thing at night that I can't really sleep very well. The other symptom that I... Um, I get and you can't see it so much at the moment because I'm wearing makeup but I get really bad skin in pregnancy and that's definitely come up in the last couple of weeks and I've just got these kind of tiny spots all around my sides of my face all down my neck and all over my chest and I, as I say I don't know how much you can actually see it in the video but they're also very itchy um, and I, I had to see a dermatologist in my last pregnancy because I got this at the same and it's just like hormonal acne but also hormonal eczema so it's the two in one so I've kind of got a cream to treat the acne but that dries your skin and then I also have the cream to treat the eczema but that makes your skin greasy that can make the acne worse so that's a bit of a pain but I'm really trying to keep on 
top of it this time because it got so bad last time and I was um you know if you go back to see my kind of um early you know my birth vlog or something like that then you can see on the pit on the on the videos of me actually in labor my skin is just terrible and I don't want it to get that bad again so I'm trying to keep on top of um doing the acne cream and moisturizing and kind of do it alternately so they don't make each other worse another symptom I've had is a lot of pain in my rib right kind of it's like right it's at the back but it's in my ribs and it's like in between um two of my ribs and I got that last time as well um, and what's been really helping with that is just doing some stretching and some morning yoga so it's a massive difference between my first and second pregnancy I was never able to do any kind of exercises or anything like that in my um, first pregnancy I was just too weak and too sick but this time I have felt like I've had more energy and every morning I do maybe 10 or 15 minutes of pregnancy yoga and um, I just put it on and like put YouTube videos on and that has been really helpful for my pelvis because I also got um, pelvic pain in my last pregnancy and I was starting to get that this pregnancy not and not anything terrible but because it started I wanted to keep on top of that and not let it get worse so I've been doing pelvic exercises and also back strengthening exercises and exercises to stretch out my ribs and just stretch out my body to kind of create more space because obviously everything is just stretching and moving around and it's really common to get aches and pains i'm also seeing a physiotherapist at the beginning of march um so i'm hoping that they might be able to give me some exercises and help me out a bit with that as well the only other thing to say about my first trimester is that i obviously had the scan um, and i actually had the scan i was 13 weeks and one day they gave me the due date of the 5th of august I also had the nuchal screening which screens for Down syndrome and the other two syndromes as well and that all came back normal and low risk. Um, the baby is growing fine, everything was fine in the scan. Um, I love the scans, it's one of my favourite bits of pregnancy and I actually get extra scans in my pregnancies because my BMI is so low. I get um, the normal scans at 12 weeks and 20 weeks and then I also get a scan at 28 weeks. 32 weeks 36 weeks and 40 weeks which is just to make sure the babies are growing the baby is growing fine there's not babies there's one baby um the baby is growing fine um because i'm really small but with miriam she grew absolutely fine she was born seven pounds 15 ounces so there was definitely nothing wrong with her growth she wasn't born small despite me being quite small um and then the last thing i want to show you is just a little bump shot um, as I say I'm 15 weeks today so I'll just spin this camera around mind the mess in the background so I'll just show you here it's my 15 week bump I do tend to be quite um, big <laughs> in my bumps so I'm just going to show you through my shirt there's no point um, lifting up my shirt um, so a lot of people say that I'm quite big for 15 weeks. I think I was actually a little bit bigger for, with Miriam. But I think because I'm quite petite anyway, I think it really just pops out straight away. Um, so this video has been quite long already, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that I didn't miss anything out. Um, if you want to see any other videos, then comment below and let me know. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching, guys. And see you in my next video. Bye!